Martin, who is the Director of Immigration and, Constru and Customs Enforcement at the uh, Department of Homeland Security. John and his group deal with lots of uh, different issues, uh, certainly not all technology issues, but recently they've really stepped up their uh, focus on this area and uh, are doing some very interesting things. John had a very distinguished career in federal law enforcement uh, and immigration since uh, graduating from the University of Virginia Law School. And we are delighted to have him with us this morning, delighted and honored. So John, uh, please, please uh, come up here and I hope all of us will give him a, a nice welcome. Well, good morning. Uh, I am indeed John Morton, the Director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Um, a quick primer on ICE for those of you who uh, don't know much about us. We were created in the aftermath of 9-11 by a merger of the investigative arms of the United States Customs Service, the oldest law enforcement agency in the country, and the Immigration and Naturalization Service. Uh, we're a very large agency with about 20,000 employees, uh, a budget of 5.8 billion dollars and offices in every one of the 50 states and, and 46 countries overseas. Uh, our enforcement jurisdiction, as was just alluded to, is, is very, very broad. And so we cover everything from uh, the smuggling of, of drugs, firearms, and people to money laundering uh, to child exploitation. Uh, so we have a lot of challenges in, in front of us. So um, why uh, am I the head of a federal law enforcement agency with jurisdiction over customs, immigration, and, and border crimes uh, here speaking to you uh, today at a conference titled The State of the Net? Um, what, does, what does ICE have to do with the Internet? Um, uh, quite simply, I'm here because my business, uh, investigating crime, has brought me to the net. Crimes that in the past occurred almost exclusively on the street or through the mail uh, counterfeiting, child pornography, copyright infringement, now take place largely in cyberspace. I'm here because uh, the Internet has uh, quite simply changed ICE's world as well as yours. I'm not here because I think the Internet is a bad place. It's not. It's one of the great advances of our time, and I, I think it's fair to shape, will shape our lives and the lives of our children uh, in a uh, lasting way without any doubt. Uh, I'm basically here to emphasize th that good law enforcement now requires investigation uh, on and through the web. It's enforcement that protects the internet from crime and exploitation. It's enforcement that should receive uh, your support, that should receive strong public support. Let's take child pornography for example. In the old days, child pornography typically involved the sharing of images and videos through the mail. Uh, and that's how we got into this business, through our customs powers. A lot of this was coming in from foreign countries through the mails, through the ports, and it became a duty of the United States Customs Service to prevent that kind of uh, illicit sharing. Today, almost all of the activity has moved to the Internet. Instead of working mail rooms and shipping centers, uh, we now work websites, chat rooms, and online networks. <clears throat> Sadly, as you know, there is no shortage of work. Uh, we're the principal investigator at this point of child pornography in the United States. Uh, last year, working with our friends at the Department of Justice, we brought over 1,000 cases of child exploitation. Um, the vast majority were child pornography cases uh, involving the Internet. In a subset of cases, there was, uh, sadly, active physical abuse present. Videos of child abuse, uh, networks of individuals actually coming together online to watch uh, child abuse as it happened. Uh, attempts to lure children into having sex, uh, web pages promoting child sex tourism overseas. Uh, in the fraud realm, as you're well aware, we and other federal law enforcement agencies pursue individuals who defraud credit card companies, who defraud uh, the DMV, who defraud the government through stolen identities or manufactured identities, again, almost all of which is now uh, occurring over the Internet. You can go on the Internet today and buy a U.S. passport. You can buy uh, a driver's license. You can buy a Schengen visa. You name it, it's available. 
Sometimes it's stolen, sometimes it's counterfeit, but it's there. Um, <clears throat> and at the end of the day, half of these scams uh, aren't just about def defrauding the government so that somebody can come in on uh, a one-time trip. Think about the credit card scams. Uh, here, people's identities are being stolen. Uh, U.S. Uh, manufacturers and U.S. banks are being defrauded, and they're being defrauded on a grand scale. Um, and then what I really came to address, and I think what you know, most of you most know us for now, is our work in the intellectual property arena uh, on the net. Um, intellectual property theft, counterfeiting, piracy has migrated to the net like so many other crimes. Um, whether it's online sites that offer fake luxury goods for sale or pirated mu movies, software, uh, there is a, literally a virtual flea market uh, on the seamy side of the internet. And this side has unfortunately grown as access and bandwidth have uh, increased exponentially. The 2010 Cisco Visual Networking Inde Index reports that download speeds of DVD quality movies have been reduced from taking three days 10 years ago to around two hours last year. Uh, an MP3 download time has been reduced from about three minutes to five seconds. The same report forecasts that global IP traffic will quadruple by 2014. So those kinds of increases in speed and access to the internet, while absolutely positive for global communication and commerce, also provides tremendous criminal opportunity for those that are poised and willing to take advantage of it. And they present a real risk to America's film, television, and music industry, one of the, some of the great uh, industries here in the United States. Um, let me talk very briefly about our most recent enforcement action uh, undertaken specifically to address intellectual property enforcement uh, online. Through Operation In Our Sites, and sites being spelled S-I-T-E-S in a purposeful play on words, Federal magistrate judges, and I emphasize federal magistrate judges, not ICE, issued criminal seizure warrants for the domain names of websites that illegally offered, counterfeited, uh, copyrighted or tra trademark goods without authority of the rights holder. We investigated the websites, and in every single case, obtained counterfeit trademark goods or pirated copyright material from the website. The evidence collected during the investigation was presented to attorneys at the Department of Justice, and together our agents and the prosecutors decided whether or not to obtain a seizure order for each site in each case. Um, among the determinations that we had to make were whether the domain names were, of course, registered here in the United States, which, as many of you know, all .nets and .coms are, even if the website operates overseas. And that's, uh, part of the focus of our efforts in trying to do something and attack uh, from our perspective illicit activity that while occurring in part overseas was heavily dependent on a piece here in the United States. The court orders were served by ICE agents on the domestic domain name registries and then the name, domain names were seized and the sites redirected to a contract server. Uh, the contract server links <coughs> the domain name to a new site that only includes a seizure noter, notice, a seizure banner, uh, advising anyone who sees it that a federal court has ordered uh, the seizure and uh, of the domain name. As with any other court in order, the owner of that domain name may challenge the seizure uh, in United States District Court. A hearing would then be held at which the site owner would appear, have counsel present if they wanted to, and the government that is, uh, ICE and the United States Attorney, would have the burden of proof and present our evidence so that the court could determine the validity of the seizure uh, and the evidence supporting it. Now, during the first phase of in our sites last June, ICE and the United States Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York obtained seizure warrants for domain names of eight websites offering pirated films and TV programs. These sites allowed visitors to stream or legally download current highly popular television shows and movies. The sites we targeted offered more than 200 movies, often within days of theatrical release, in one instance before theatrical release. 
and more than 300 television programs were also um, offered. Of, of great interest from this operation, and frankly it was entirely unanticipated, was the collateral impact of the enforcement action. So we were targeting particular websites, and that in and of itself was fairly novel in that we were going after the domain names in, a, in an organized fashion, but what was really interesting is what happened afterwards. So according to industry analysis, 81 other sites that had been offering pirated uh, material voluntarily shut themselves down after we seized eight sites by court order. Uh, in my many, many years in law enforcement, I've never seen that kind of deterrence come from a single law enforcement action. I thought we would be in the business of, of whack-a-mole. We were prepared to take sites down and for, to have them reappear momentarily. And sometimes that does happen. We knew uh, that that was a possibility. We went into it with our eyes uh, wide open. But here, uh, we were dealing with a phenomenon we totally did not anticipate, and that's people looking at what we did, why we were doing it, and voluntarily uh, altering their behavior. Uh, a good result from law enforcement's perspective. Uh, a couple of the domain names did reemerge in another form. Uh, the vast majority did not, even of the original eight. Uh, and two months ago, we seized one of the two of the eight that did reappear, and uh, it was in an action in London. And working with uh, UK police, we seized uh, the site, and we conducted a search, and uh, that site has not reemerged since. So we're down to one site out of the original eight that reemerged. Another interesting uh, phenomenon was that our seizure banners, which when you went to the redirected site, there was a seizure banner that says the United States government has seized your site, it's against, that seized the site, it's against the law. Um, so these seizure banners, now in place of the illegal uh, content material, have received over 25 million hits since we put them up. And in many instances, the seizure banner gets more hits than the site itself did when it was operating and offering counterfeit and pirated materials. So there has been an odd sort of phenomenon of people just wanting to go see the government seizure banners for the purpose of seeing the seizure banner. Um, we're going to continue to do this. Uh, we're going to continue to exercise good judgment about how we do this. Uh, just so you realize, in our second round, we had 130 referrals from industry on offending websites. We didn't go after all 130. Uh, we actually went out after 81, and that's because uh, we winnowed through the process. We did exercise independent judgment. Uh, there were some sites that we felt didn't make uh, the cut, and uh, we did not pursue enforcement action against them. So um, why are we going to continue with these operations? Why do we as a law enforcement agency even care about counterfeiting and copyright infringement over the net? Why has the Department of Homeland Security engaged in this sort of activities? Uh, I get asked these questions all the time. Let me address them in the, in the minute or two that, that, that I've got left. Uh, you know, from my perspective, the vast majority of commerce on the Internet is entirely legitimate. Real goods, real vendors. It's in a virtual world, but it's real. And it's positive. But uh, there are plenty of fake goods and fake uh, vendors out there and individuals who are not intending to contribute to legitimate commerce in any way. And they're just taking away from the Internet, from the image of the Internet as a safe and convenient place to uh, shop. And in doing so, they chill the reason I hope you're all here, which is that ultimately this is uh, an incredible advance. It's going to change all of our lives, is changing all of our lives, and you want it to be a place that, that has uh, a sense of credibility, a, a sense of safety, a sense of legitimacy. Uh, I, I say this a lot, and I just repeat it here now. Remember, um, counterfeiters and copyright infringers are not good corporate citizens. They're not invested in um, American growth, innovation, or bril brilliance. They don't pay health care. They don't pay taxes. They don't pay pensions. They don't invest in the next movie. They don't invest in the next revolutionary uh, drug. 
the next iPod, the next uh, technological advance. No, they wait for others and they profit criminally without doing any of the work, any of the thinking. Um, what we've been doing at ICE, particularly with the domain name seizures, has been alternately uh, praised by the rights holders, criticized uh, by uh, some, and I think watched with curiosity by many. Um, listen, we respect the debate. Um, one of the other unintended consequences of doing this that I think is entirely possible is that people are talking about it. Um, whether or not you agree with our approach to enforcement uh, on the Internet, it has engendered uh, a lively debate on what we're doing and why we're doing it, and, and that's a good thing because not enough people were talking about it, and I assume that's another sort of the spirit of this conference, which is, hey, good, good policy requires good people to talk about hard issues and, and come to a better place. Um, Listen, so we respect the, de the debate. We'll withstand the criticism. Um, we're carrying out our law enforcement mission. We're going to continue to do it. Uh, we're going to follow the law. Um, I want people to understand uh, a few things. First, ICE is not the police of the Internet. We're a criminal law enforcement agency with specific jurisdiction to go after certain things. Uh, we are not uh, trying to say that we are the beat cop uh, for uh, the web. Second, despite all the criticism you see of us, uh, and particularly surrounding the domain names, we have zero interest in limiting uh, free speech. We have zero interest in uh, trying to engage in enforcement that somehow limits due process. Every single thing that we do, we go to the Department of Justice and we get a court order, period. Uh, third, we will follow criminal activity wherever it occurs including the Internet. We cannot live in a society in which the Internet somehow has some protection from, uh, for criminals that the corner of Fourth and Main doesn't. Uh, you know, it's got to be the same rules have to apply. Uh, in short, we are going to stay at it. Uh, I'm unapologetic on this last point, just as we are when crime does occur uh, at our border, uh, in your home, or at the corner of Fourth and Main. Crime is crime, and we're going to pursue it wherever it happens, period. So with that, I thank you all for your time, for uh, braving the elements to get here. Um, I have to uh, run to the next thing, but I'm happy to take one or two questions, and then, then I'll go. Um, and I'm being told to talk louder, which I will try to do. If anybody wants to ask a question, go right ahead. Well, uh, all I'll say to that is uh, there are uh, lots of risks. Uh, life is about balancing competing interests. Um, and my view is that, you know, I don't want to pursue the work at ICE based on a concern uh, about how um, an another country may uh, misapply what we're doing. A lot of the websites we went after in the second round of in our sites were based in China, and they were um, selling counterfeit items produced in Chinese factories, uh, and uh, a good portion of them were outright frauds on the consumer. 
Some of them. Not all. Um, but uh, by, by that, I mean they were all knowingly engaged in the sale of counterfeit goods. Some were uh, literally posing entirely from lock, stock, and barrel as legitimate producers and sellers of uh, counterfeit goods. I mean, the, the, we, in the last round that we did of NR sites, we did 81 um, seizures. The vast majority, 75, 76, were of uh, sites selling counterfeit hard good products. It is, was the seizure uh, of the domain names related to the entertainment industry, the music industry, five sites, that has engendered the most um, discussion. We have to demonstrate for purposes of the seizure, that the content being hosted, uh, that there was a, one, that there was a violation of the law, and two, that it was knowing. And we spend a lot of time thinking through, can we demonstrate those things to a federal magistrate and sustain our burden? Um, listen, I'm a federal prosecutor. That's what I did before I came to this job. Uh, and so, uh, we understand well, not only that we have to do these things, but that it's a good thing. It's a good thing that we go to a judge who ultimately decides whether or not where uh, our case passes muster. And we're going to continue to do that. I understand that there are sites in which, arguably, the person doesn't know that the content on the site is infringing or in a middle ground that the government can't prove that knowledge. And that's why we don't bring every single case that is referred to us. But where we can demonstrate that you know uh, and you're breaking the law, we're going to enforce the law. Um, it's that simple. All right. I have to go. With that, thank you so thank much. You I much. appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.